Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4BMG. You've seen this ground spike from eBay seller BD7-Maple show up on the channel now a couple of times. I am talking with BD7-Maple about making some modifications to this. One, perhaps making this ground spike 12 inches rather than eight. This works for me in my working conditions. It may not work for you. I've also talked to them about changing this connector from an SO239 to the 3 8 by 24. So it will accept the antennas that many of us use, the telescoping antennas. And then that would eliminate the need for this other um, adapter, which is a, a $20 adapter. So we'll see if he comes back with that and makes the modifications. If so, I will most certainly come back to you and share that with you because at that point, it's an even more valuable piece of gear to me than it is already. Ham operator Wes, Kilo November 4, November Papa Hotel, saw this video and he heard me describe why I like this and prefer it to my Wolf River Coil mini tripod. And he reached out to me. For those of you not familiar with Wolf River Coils, first of all, they're fantastic products. Second of all, what you're looking at is only one leg of the three-legged tripod. This hub has two more holes to receive the two additional legs. For illustration purposes, I'm only going to show one leg today. In my video on that BD7 Maple Antenna ground stake, I stated I liked putting my Wolf River Coil mini silver bullet on that because it's not susceptible to the wind, whereas this tripod can be susceptible to the wind. So Wes reached out to me and said, Bob, I have a solution. Here's what I've done. Now, let me say very quickly, Wes is wanting to share this with you. So if you find this idea useful, his call sign will be in the description below as well as here on the screen. You should reach out to him at his email on QRZ and ask him for the 3D print file so you can make this for yourself. And this is one of the things I like about ham radio and most hams, most of all, is they are so willing to share their thoughts and ideas. So he's created a way to deal with blowover on this Wolf River Coil tripod, whether you use the mini or the larger one. You may have your own solution. We're sharing Wes's solution. So if you want Wes's idea, please reach out to him directly, ask him for the 3D print files, and you can go make this for yourself. Here's the kit that Wes provided to me. We're going to talk about it here on the bench top real quick, and then we're going to get outside so you can actually see it in operation. It will make much more sense out there, but let's just talk through it real quick. Wes has provided a radio marker, a coax marker. Now, again, you would be getting the 3D print files for these items so that you can wrap your radials around here as they are spread out across the ground, because we all know what happens as we're operating in public areas, people are always tripping over our radials. And then the same for the coax. He has created this small winder that will not stress your coax that you would weave in and out so that your coax is visible. So the brighter you would print your parts, the more easily they would be seen by innocent bystanders getting in the way of us having fun. So here's the uh, genius behind the product. It would be these two products right here. He's created these markers for the top of these eight inch long spike nails. And he has one that's a larger diameter than the other. Um, that would just be for which one you want to be most visible. The nails are the same size. You would have to pick these up at your local hardware store. And then you could print all this larger size or all the smaller diameter size, whichever you wanted. And you could put either or in this particular booty, as Wes calls it. Wes refers to this as the Wolfie kit because it's going with the Wolf River Coils tripod. Or you could print them all small and use that in the booty and use the small ones in the radio markers and the coax markers. So you have the options to print large or small. Here's how this works. This is so ingenious. So if we just, let's walk away from and get away from our hub and let's go to the end of the uh, tripod foot. And I have it slightly inclined as though it would be off the ground. It's as simple as this, taking this booty going over the end of the tripod leg, and now I can orient this hole upwards. And what do you think I'm going to do now? Wherever it makes sense for me, I can locate that eight inch spike down through that hole. And if I do that at three different locations across this particular kit, what do you think is going to happen? I'm going to have a very sturdy uh, tripod at that point in time because I have three areas 
spaced around the tripod that are now going to be anchored into the ground as far as I want to push these nail spikes into the ground. That's the concept. Let's get it out in the field and see how it works. I've untangled my Wolf River Coil 33 foot radials. I always wrap them up together and I regret it as soon as I pull that out the next time. I have something in the works for that. I'm setting up the tripod here. Those of you who own this Wolf River Coil setup are really familiar with it. Great setup. Here's what we're gonna put on display. and Here's what Wes has provided to us. We have radial markers, two different sizes. We'll put them on one of our radials so you can see what that looks like. Wes raises his radials up, so three of the ground spikes are for that purpose. He's also provided a coax marker, and we'll put our coax through these markers so you can see that as well. He's created two styles of booties, one he calls isolation and one non-isolation. So the isolation one, goes across the bottom of the leg of the tripod and it, it goes no further because it has a bottom on it. So it's isolating the tripod from the ground. And then the other one is the style I'm going to use where it's a through hole and you put it where you need it to be for the spike that you're going to put into the ground. I'm using the ground spikes that have the smaller ring on it. My theory would be that somebody would see this antenna and not trip over it. So I'm gonna use the smaller rings here and the larger ring at the end of the radial so people can see it easier. Slide the booty up over the end, stick a spike in. We'll just put them all on temporarily to begin with. You can see this is very straightforward and simple. I've not tested this out. This is the first time it's that simple. Sometimes it's the simple things, right? You already know that I have very soft soil here in the Tampa Bay area, except right there, I hit a root. So we'll go ahead and use our hammer to get us into these areas. Nope, I'm not gonna do that because there was an old oak tree close by here. I will never get that out. So let's just move a little bit. That's gonna work and we can orient these where we want them. Still hit that root. Well, that'll only help things, right? And there. Well, I don't think that's what uh, Wes had in mind, but uh, it's a nail, I have a hammer, and there's wood. Here we have the coax markers, and you can see exactly what the idea was here, just to give you a little bit of color variation so people walking by don't trip over them. That makes sense. I've tripped over my radials a half a dozen times setting them out here. So let's show you what we want to do with our radial markers. Wes's idea is that this would allow you to raise your radials up. Again, Florida grass, this is like six inches, eight inches thick. I don't think it's going to work real well for me, but you'll get the idea. I am just going to clamp my wire on the end of here. My radial wires are not set up for this specific application, but you will get the idea. Now you can hold your radial in place and uh, let me show you how to attach the radial markers. Here's Wes's idea. You can see that my radial is slightly elevated and now I've got a nice little marker on it here. Again, you're the one that's 3D printing these, so you can make them whatever color you want. Fire engine red, hunting vest orange, yellow, pink, whatever. And I can say now, looking back at that antenna, I actually, I see the radial wire. That's nice. I may have to start using these. I guess it's time to buy a 3D printer. Here's a pretty good idea of what's taking place. The booties are holding down the three legs of the tripod. We have two coax markers sitting here leading to the radio. 
I only put two on, but of course you would spread them across the entire run of your coax. And here you can see the radio markers, and I've got them spaced about every three feet. And for the first time in my life, I can see my Wolf River Coil radials. And Wes, there's no way we're going easy on you. Big boy, SS17, that's what we're putting on this. And you know darn well I'm not going to come out and set up an antenna without turning on a radio. Let's see if we can make a contact or two. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4, uh, Bravo, Mike Golf. What's your account? Roger, Roger. You're 5'9 to Tampa, Florida. I just asked for 5'9 to my brother, Florida. I'm 5'7 in Brazil. My name is Heidi Hotel. It's the new York. What's your account? Kilo Delta 4, it's Bob here in Tampa Bay. I'm running 20 watts. Good to speak with you today, friend. Seventy-three. Just for kicks, we're going to go push that thing around a little bit and see what it does. Don't want to destroy that antenna. They cost a few dollars, but... Not bad. stamp of approval. Thanks, West, for investing the time and the money to share with me your solution to keeping a Wolf River coil antenna from blowing over in the wind. This was incredibly helpful to me. And those radial markers? For the first time in my life, I saw where my radials were and could stop tripping over them. Those of you interested in picking up the 3D print files from Wes, don't forget, look up his email on QRZ Kilo November 4, November Papa Hotel. Hope you found this useful friend. I did. Talk to you soon. 73.